Hello and welcome back. Um, I'm going to do another unboxing. I've, I've had a, a string of these things lately. I um, don't know if that's good or bad news. I kind of, like I mentioned before, unboxings aren't really my thing. Try to keep them short, um, but I just, I'm in a period now where I seem to have a lot of unboxings to get through. So uh, let's get started. This is a the Great Crisis of Frederick II and this is from um, VUCA Simulations, V-U-C-A. I've never heard of this company. A quick look on Board Game Geek says that it is a German company. Uh, it says they're made in Germany. And uh, it says they recently changed their name. So I'm not sure. It didn't say who they were before. So I'm not sure who they were. They are now um, VUCA Simulations, V-U-C-A. So uh, I, I've never heard of the publisher. I've never heard of this game. And the way I found out about it was on Armchair Dragoons. And as I've said before, you're missing out if you're not a member there because that's where you can sometimes find out about uh, new things like this. But uh, someone over there had posted a link. I think it was um, Crossing the Line. It was a World War II game and published by the same company, the only other game that they had. And so in checking out that game and the website, I saw this game, The Great Crisis of Frederick. Uh, to and thought I would give it a try and, and see what it's like um, because the uh, the other one uh, crossing the line the components looked fantastic so I'm hoping 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 that this is more of the same um, more of the same thing so we will we will see I've not opened this yet so we will find out together um, so right off solitaire suitability is eight which is good um, like that. Uh, this is early modern historical period. Um, contains a rule book, amount of map, 198 counters and cards. So this is a like a card game and there's dice as well. So um, that's good. I kind of like the, um, I, I like having dice. I'm not a huge fan of a strictly card driven game. I like to have some dice rolling going on in there too. Um, unit scale regiments, one turn is two months. It's point to point uh, type game. And again, I'm not usually not a huge fan of point to point uh, type war games, but um, they do serve a purpose and uh, we'll see how that plays out. Playing time, five to eight hours. And of course, two players or solitaire play. Uh, don't know if there's solitaire only rules in here, but we'll find out. Let's take a look and see what the components are like. And like I said, I'm hoping that these are like the... Uh, Crossing the line, that World War II game. So the box is really nice. It's uh, sturdy construction. It's not thin at all, so that's nice. Positive sign going in. Um, and here we have, you know, uh, he looks... <laughs> Frederick looks worried there. Um, so the rule book is not huge. Nice table of contents. Um, and right off, I can see there's examples of play, so that's awesome. I like to see that. There's really no reason why these days I don't, you know, I, I think you should have a, a sample of play if you're going to publish a game. It makes it a lot easier to learn. Um, so it's a, not a glossy rule book. It is a, and it's, this is kind of like um, the last unboxing I did. I think it was, um, I don't know if it was the Tide at Sunrise or um, a Splendid Little War. I think it was a Splendid Little War that had the same type of paper and that it's not glossy but the images are glossy um, but the paper itself really isn't so nice uh, nice rule book really nice printing uh, very very I, I call this a high quality rule book um, and of course uh, we have our markers our, uh, our uh, what do you call it the uh, symbols that we're going to find on that game board when we get to it the, the tactic tactics cards uh, so there's a Prussian deck and an Austrian deck of tactic cards. So that's cool. Um, so there's a required tactical rating. Only cards that can be used in field battles. Um, the name of the card, effect and conditions, some illustrations. Just flipping through here really quick and taking a look at what's uh, here. Standard stuff, just a standard rule book, not and not a lot of rules. So it's eleven pages. 
So it looks like 11 pages of rules, roughly, until we get into those uh, examples of play that they had promised us in the table of contents. Um, this looks like the setup for uh, one of the scenarios, if not the grand campaign itself. I, I don't know if there are scenarios. Um, maybe we'll get to that. There's just one campaign. And, and on the back, we have a uh, procedure of a phase. So looks like a... Um, Sequence of play type thing back there. We will set that aside. And of course, we get little Ziploc bags to put our um, counters in. And it looks like I'm missing a counter already. Uh oh. <laughs> That's not good. Let's um, hope that counter is somewhere in the box. Um, I guess it's a good sign in that these are probably fairly easy to punch out. And they are. These are really nice counters. Let's see. Well, I don't like the artwork on that. Let's see if you can see that. Um, hard to see there. Let me see if I can get that to focus in a little bit more. The lighting in here is not so great today. So um, nice artwork, nice counters, thick. Uh, the corners are rounded already, so I will not have to worry about doing that. Control markers. Um, Double-sided counters, which are good. Uh, France and Sweden and uh, there are the Prussians are all here. I'm going to try to get this up closer again so you can see the quality of these counters. Really nice. Um, it's like some leaders here. The back sides, just as nice as the front side. High-quality counters. So, again, I'm excited to get uh, the game components of this quality. This is nice. Good stuff. Although I am disappointed that I'm missing a counter. I don't see it yet. Uh, we'll have to figure out which one I'm missing if it doesn't show up and see if I can't get a replacement. I'm hoping it's in here, though. And there it is. So it, it is in there. It just fell out. And we get some dice. Now, these are interesting. These are they're D6s. They almost feel... I, no, they're plastic. I was going to say, they almost feel wooden, but they're not. They're plastic. They're larger than what you would normally get in a game like this. They're larger size um, D6s. They're real good. They're, the corners are rounded. They're real good. That's nice. And then we have these cards that they refer to, and I will try to um, open this card deck without ruining anything. There's a there we go. Here. Let's put this in this box for now. Uh, sticky. I'll get that out of the way. So there's the cards. Um, again, I'll kind of stand up here so that you can see the uh, printing on the cards. Really nice. you got these nice little graphic images. Tells you what it is. And uh, those numbers, which apparently are a rating to play of some type. Nice cards. They're not. They're glossy. They're um, not cheap paper at all. They're kind of. I got a matte feel to them. Kind of a texture to them. So that's really nice. Nice card deck. And I'll just set these over here. And the map board itself. And I left these bags in the way. So let's get those out of the way. Let's take a look at this board. It is a hard mounted board, which is nice. Like the mounted boards. Okay, let's bring this back and make sure it's not upside down. I'm gonna make some room here. I don't know if I can get the whole thing on here or not. Like I mentioned um, in another video, I'm working on my tabletop space to try to make it such that I can catch at least a standard uh, 34 by 22 map all at once on the game table so that it makes it easier to. Um, to do these videos, I like I like doing the physical um, tabletop playthroughs more so than I think sometimes tabletop simulators. So here's the um, here's the map board, and you can see it actually does fit nicely onto my uh, table. So it looks like we're getting corner to corner. I'm reaching out from corner <laughs> to corner, so it fits nicely. Um, so again, this this board is high quality um, print. It's almost got that same matte texture-like uh, print 
texture to it. Um, beautiful colors. It looks like there's a lot of, um, they put a lot of attention to detail in places to put, you know, your discard piles, your tactics decks. Uh, over here we have the Austrian Alliance and the Prussian Alliance across from us, of course, with the unit reserves, commander reserves. Uh, beautiful board. I like it. Uh, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of area to area um, war games, area to area movement, but I do believe that there is a place for games um, for this type of game in a war game. I think there's times when you want to have, you know, your units or your forces move to particular areas. So this kind of kind of keeps you um, more focused, I guess, than than a, a game that, that doesn't have area to area movement. Um, so yeah, there it is. That's, uh, looks like, I'm assuming that there are capital cities that are marked out and there's, um, some of these smaller cities. I don't see a, uh, I don't see any kind of key on here, any kind of a chart that tells us what these, um, these are, but I did see them in the rule book, so that's good. Um, so there you go. I just, just received this yesterday. I wanted to crack into it because like I said, I am not familiar with this company. Um, and I wanted to um, see what it was all about. Like I said, the World War II game, uh, Crossing the Line, look, the components in that one look spectacular too. Look just as good as this. And these are nice. This is a nice, nice print quality. So um, I will try to uh, get this one to the table soon um, and do a playthrough because I think, um, and I, you know, it's, one thing I was going to check for is see if it did have solitaire rules, because it does mention um, solitaire play. And just glancing here, I don't see a dedicated section here for solitaire play. But I, I'll let you know. Like I said, it's not going to matter either way here at My Own Worst Enemy. You know, I believe any game can be played solitaire. It, um, yeah, I don't see any solitaire rules here, but we'll figure that out. We will figure that out. Probably not a lot of hidden information here, so that's probably why they rated it an 8. So there you go. Just a quick look at uh, Frederick II, um, The Great Crisis of Frederick II by uh, VUCA Simulations. And um, again, if it's nicely on my table here, so I'm, I'm hoping to get back to some physical tabletop playthroughs. Um, and I think you're going to see this one sooner rather than later. So please come back and join us again. And... Uh, I will have it ready to go.